The f- <coughs> oh, right at the back of the throat. Good morning, here is what is coming up on this Wednesday edition of My Morning Glory. The Met Gun cop cleared of murdering Chris Carber is forced into hiding after gangsters put a £10,000 bounty on his head. Trump's campaign files a complaint against Labour for foreign interference in the US election over support for Kamala Harris and... Kaylee Price walks her new Sphinx cat in a pram as she takes a fresh swipe at eggs. Peter Andre. <laughs> To anyone who thinks they can exploit and coerce others by using the so-called casting couch system, this case should serve as a warning. Prepare to trade that couch for a bed in federal prison. The former CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch and his partner have been arrested, charged and bailed with running a prostitution and international sex trafficking business. Authorities arrested former fashion executive Mike Jeffries, his partner Matthew Smith and the couple's alleged middleman James Jacobson on Tuesday morning. Federal prosecutors said the men used false fraud and coercion to engage in violent and exploitative sexual acts. Mr Jeffries and his partner have previously denied any wrongdoing via their lawyers and Mr Jeffries's lawyers told the BBC on Tuesday that they would respond in detail to the allegations after the indictment is unsealed. The FBI opened an investigation last year after the BBC revealed claims that Mike Jeffries and his partner sexually exploited and abused men at events they hosted in their New York residences and hotels around the world. The BBC investigation found there was a sophisticated operation involving a middleman and a network of recruiters tasked with finding men for these events. Newly released footage of Chris Cabot on the dance floor in a nightclub in East London, carrying a gun. A man was shot in the leg and shot again as he tried to escape. Chris Cabot was the gunman. Don't shoot, shoot! A week later, Chris Cabot was killed during a police stop in South London. The car he was driving had been linked to another shooting the night before. Gangsters have put a £10,000 bounty on the gun cop who shot dead Chris Cabber. Sergeant Martin Blake, 40, and his family are now in hiding. He was cleared of murder but faces misconduct charges to the fury of pals who say he was only doing his job. Cabar, 24, was unmasked as a feared gangster linked to two shootings in the six days leading up to his death in September 2022. Cabar was killed with a single bullet fired by Sergeant Blake through his windscreen. He had tried to ram his way free from a police stop in Streatham, South London. A jury took three hours to acquit Mr Blake of murder. The married dad said he fired to protect colleagues from the car. He was under armed protection throughout his three-week trial and later returned to his family at a secret address which is guarded. It is understood Sergeant Blake's two children have moved to school. It was alleged during pre-trial legal submissions that those linked to the 6-7 gang, of which Cubber was a core member, were seeking to kill a police officer in retribution. Sergeant Blake's counsel, Patrick Gibbs, Casey, cited an intelligence report about the bounty, saying the sum on offer was £10,000 in exchange for personal details of Martin Blake, including addresses and vehicle registration marks. The threat of harm was directed at both Mr Blake and his family. Sergeant Ross McCabin of the Met's Counterterrorism Command said, In nearly 30 years of service, I have never been more concerned about the welfare of an officer. Sergeant Blake was named in March after losing a court battle to keep his anonymity. It is because the officer was charged by the CPS that his name was put into the public domain in the first place. Donald Trump's campaign has filed a Federal Election Commission complaint against the UK's Labour Party, accusing it of blatant foreign interference in the US election in aid of the harris Wills campaign. The complaint cites media reports about contact between Labour and the Harris campaign, as well as apparent volunteering efforts, arguing that this amounts to illegal contributions. The BBC understands that Labour activists campaigning in the US presidential election are doing so in personal capacity. 
capacity. The Prime Minister told the BBC that Labour members are there in their spare time. Trump's campaign says democratic ties with Labour amount to illegal foreign assistance. Specifically, the complaint cites newspaper reporting that Labour-liked individuals have travelled to the US to campaign for Harris. That reporting, the complaint alleges, creates a reasonable inference that the Labour Party has made and the Harris campaign has accepted illegal foreign national contributions. The letter refers to the Washington Post reporting that communications were exchanged between the parties and that senior officials have met in private. Additionally, the complaint cites a social media post on LinkedIn in which a Labour staff member said that nearly 100 current and former party members will be headed to battleground states in the US. The post from Labour Party Head of Operations Sophia Patel added that 10 spots are available and that we are sorting your housing. It appears to have since been deleted. A man has been charged with murder after the death of a woman who was walking her dog. Mum of six, Anita Rose, 57, suffered injuries to her head and face while walking her Springer Spaniel in the Suffolk village of Brantham on July 24th. Roy Barkley, 55, of no fixed address, has been charged with murder. He is due to appear in Ipswich Magistrates Court today. A cyclist found Anita lying critically injured and unconscious on a track near the local sewage works and railway line at around 6.25am. She was discovered wearing only her bra on her top half, as well as leggings and trainers on her bottom half, with her jacket taken. The much-loved Grand's black phone case and Samson earbuds had also been taken. Springer Spaniel Bruce's lead was wrapped around Anita's leg, but the dog was unharmed. Anita was raised to Aidan Brooks Hospital in Cambridgeshire, where she died four days later on July the 28th. The parents of a seven-year-old boy who died in a house explosion in Newcastle have paid tribute to their son. Archie York died after an explosion ripped through the terraced house on Violet Close in the Benwell and Ellswick area of the city. Jason Laws, believed to be in his 30s, was also tragically killed in the explosion which happened at about 12.45am last Wednesday morning. The explosion destroyed six flats, leaving much of the property smouldering in the hours that followed. Archie's devastated parents, Catherine and Robbie, have now released a heartfelt tribute to their best friend. They said, Archie was not only our son, but our best friend. He lit up every room he went in, whether that was with his cheeky smile he was known for or some of his cheeky words. We are so broken as a family, but Archie will live on in his baby brother Fidley, who is the spitting image of him. He might have been small but had a heart of gold. Everyone loved him. Police looking for a missing woman Victoria Tyler have found a body close to where she was last seen three weeks ago. The 34-year-old nurse was last seen on the 30th of September after she left home in Moulton, North Yorkshire. North Yorkshire Police Assistant Chief Constable Wayne Fox said underwater search teams had now found a body in the River Derwent. He said on Tuesday that it was located close to where a number of Miss Tyler's personal possessions had been found. Formal identification is yet to take place, but Miss Tyler's family have been informed. Miss Tyler was captured on CCTV walking towards a play park near the water's edge on the day she disappeared and earlier that morning at a BP garage where she brought several items. She was first reported missing on the 1st of October. Liam Payne's father has been warned he could have to wait 10 days for permission to take his son's body home. Jeff Payne arrived in Buenos Aires last week to formally identify his son and bring him home after the 31-year-old former One Direction star felt his death from a hotel balcony. The 66-year-old motor mechanic visited the morgue where his son is being held and spoke with the Argentine Ministry of Justice officials who are investigating the circumstances around the tragedy. He also visited the hotel where his son died and thanked fans for their tributes and vigil. The lead investigator warned Mr Payne it could be 10 days before the examination results come back from the laboratory and that he would not be able to take his son's body home before. He also told Mr Payne that hotel staff were being questioned amid claims that his son, who had apparently ditched his abuse of drugs and alcohol, had been preyed on by drug dealers at the boutique venue. 
Water companies in England could be banned from making a profit under plans for a complete overhaul of the system. The idea is one of the options being considered by a new commission set up by the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, or DEFRA, amid public fury over the way firms have prioritised profit over the environment. I'm not prepared to pay more in my bills until I am ensured that we are going to get our rivers, lakes and seas cleaned up. I am not paying more for debt and for dividends and for people to lie in their pockets. Absolutely not. The sources at the department said they would consider forcing the sale of water companies in England to firms that would run them as not-for-profits. Unlike under nationalisation, the company would not be run by the government but a private company run for public benefit. The non-profit model, which is widely used in other European countries, allows staff to be paid substantial salaries and bonuses but any profits on top of that are returned to the company. Welsh Water, which runs under this model, has no shareholders and any surplus money is reinvested back into the business or into customer services. Great idea. Bring out the lisp. Sphinx. Oh. And finally, Katie Price walked her new Sphinx in a pram after she was slammed by a charity for buying another cat. The bankrupt glamour model purchased a second Sphinx despite her ongoing money woes. She stopped to admire her new pussy and held it up to her cheek for a kiss. <laughs> Katie matched her outfit to her pink and black pram, which also held another large sphinx and two dogs. Earlier this year, Katie told how she was forced to put down her last designer cat named Frog after it fell ill. She has had seven of her pets die in just six years. Charity PETA, which stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, has also insisted there needs to be an injunction stopping the mum of five from owning pets. PETA even previously offered Katie £5,000 to stop buying pets. Jesus. Katie's catwalk comes after she took another barbed swipe at her ex-husband Peter Andre on the Louis Ferru podcast. The mum of five reignited the drama with her ex-husband Peter, claiming he was jealous during their relationship. Katie, who was married to the mysterious girl singer from 2005 to 2009, says his jealousy played a massive part in their split. She revealed that while their relationship looked perfect from the outside, especially on their reality shows, Peter couldn't handle the attention she received from men. She also added that she was paid more and that they had separate contracts when they worked together. She said, I was worth more than Pete. I was always paid more than him when we did OK shoots. <laughs> she continued, he'd just come out of the jungle. Who was he? He just met me and I was his lucky day. <laughs> they met in 2004 on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and sparks flew between the two. However, their seemingly fairy tale love story ended in a messy divorce. And on that cheery, cheery note, I'm going to say that's the news from me. <laughs> Mysterious girl, move your body close to mine. Come on, move your body. Come on, move your body. <laughs>